And welcome to a special edition of the Fox 11 News Special Report. I'm Alex Michaels. And I'm Marla Teos. And joining us live right there, Dr. Barbara Ferrer, Director of L.A. County Public Health. Nice to have you with us. Thanks so much for being with us. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Marla and Alex, for inviting me. Uh, you know, we have, we have a lot of important questions. So many of you sent us questions in social media. Yeah. We're going to do our best to reflect those tonight. But, Marla, we begin with something that's breaking tonight. Yeah, just not long ago at all, just tonight, Mayor Eric Garcetti, Dr. Ferrer, said he is in favor of opening up vaccine appointments to adults under 50 years old. Since city-run sites have appointments available, this is already happening in Long Beach, San Bernardino, Riverside. The mayor says this decision is up to you. Are you going to do this before next Thursday? Yeah, thanks so much, Marla. It's such an important question and, and obviously making sure that every single appointment uh, has a person that's able to then access this vaccine is, is everyone's priority. I want to clarify that at many sites in the city and in the county at this point in time where providers are serving our hard hit communities They've already expanded eligibility uh, to people in hard hit communities who are un under the age of 50. Uh, they're really trying to make sure that we're doing everything we can to boost up that extra layer of protection in those communities that have been the hardest hit. And we've always told, um, you know, all of our providers that are vaccinating and, you know, there's hundreds of them uh, that they need to be flexible. Uh, the goal for us right now, though, is to make sure that we're getting to people who have underlying health conditions uh, and or disabilities and people who are 50, between the ages of 50 and 64. And I don't want to crowd out our obligation to have enough appointments uh, for those folks to be able to access the vaccine. So at many sites, including at the county sites, so we're having no problem filling appointments. And we've heard from lots of folks uh, that they really, you know, they just newly became eligible and they too are anxious that we make sure uh, that we go ahead and get them vaccinated uh, before we're opened up more widely. And you know, in particular for people with underlying health conditions and disabilities, they're at much higher risk. Uh, so we're gonna continue to do that work, but the mayor is right. Uh, some flexibility is needed at some of our sites and those sites, particularly when they're serving our hardest hit communities right. uh, already right. have been told to go ahead and use that flexibility. So it sounds like th the bottom line of what you're saying is that there may be some sites that choose to do this and you're okay with that, but in terms of a widespread countywide policy that everybody that is over 16 can now get a vaccine like Riverside County has done, like San Bernardino County has done already, you're not ready to do that. Yeah, we're not ready to do that. You know, we're the largest county, as, as I noted before, every time we've opened eligibility, including eligibility for people 50, uh, between the ages of 50 and 64, we've added, we don't add like 100,000 people, we add well over a million people that still need to get vaccinated. So at those sites that are doing well and filling their appointments and making it possible for our newly eligible residents uh, and workers to come and get vaccinated, we're gonna continue with that. Next week, as everyone knows, on Thursday, we too, like the rest of the state, uh, will be opening up at every single site. And again, we have almost 600 sites in the county of vaccination appointments to people 16 and older. Let's talk. I wanna do a caveat, just one quick caveat. If you're 16 and 17, you've got to get yourself to a site that's offering Pfizer vaccine. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna make sure that, you know, your, your viewers all know that there's only one vaccine that's been approved for 16 and 17 year olds. It's the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, most of our sites are sort of label what vaccine they're using. Uh, but if you're 16 and 17, please make an appointment at a site that's offering the Pfizer vaccine starting next Thursday. You know, there's a lot of discussion about this sort of rush to get people vaccinated because of the variants that are out there right now. The state hopes to have everybody vaccinated and reopen the state essentially by June 15th. In terms of the variants that are out there right now, what concerns you the most and are all of them covered by the current vaccines? You know, the good news is the vaccine's super powerful uh, and everyone should be, you know, really heartened with all of the studies to date uh, that indicate that our vaccines are working um, effectively against uh, all of the, what I call strains of the virus that are currently circulating. Uh, you may lose a, a tiny bit of effectiveness with some of the variants of concern, uh, but overall these variants are providing the, the most essential protection 
even against the variants of concern, and that is they're protecting people from being hospitalized with serious illness. And uh, unfortunately, they offer a, a lot of protection uh, against uh, people passing away. And, and that's one of the most important protections we all need to have. And I do agree with the governor. Let's move quickly, uh, as quickly as we get vaccines, let's vaccinate folks. Uh, because we all know, you know, across the country, we have variants of concern, including here in LA, that are circulating at higher levels than they've ever been circulating before. So let's get to work on getting people vaccinated. And if you're not vaccinated yet, please remember you can protect yourself and everyone else if you continue to wear that face covering over your nose and mouth, you're washing your hands, you're keeping your distance. That works against variants of concern. These are the more infectious strains of the virus, as well as it's worked against uh, this, the most dominant virus that's been circulating here in L.A. County. And you just announced yesterday that we do know now that L.A. County has the South African and also the Brazilian variants circulating within our county, and then there's a double mutant. Uh, okay, you just brought up masks. The CDC this week saying that if you are vaccinated, you are not likely to spread the virus. So then the question becomes, why do we need to wear a mask once we're all vaccinated? I think, uh, I think the key word is you are not likely, <laughs> not like we know for certain. Uh, so until we know for certain that people who are vaccinated are not capable of spreading the infection to others, we're going to need to wear our masks. That's especially true until we have what we call herd immunity, about 80% of the population vaccinated. Uh, I do understand uh, that, that folks are really anxious not to have to wear the masks any longer if they've been vaccinated. And you know, if you're with a small gathering, a handful of people and everybody's been vaccinated, definitely feel free to take that mask off. But when you're in public, when you're around other people, when you're at a work site, uh, when you go into a store, you do need to keep that mask on. Uh, because if there, there's any possibility that you, uh, when you're infected, and we do know that people, a very small number of people, but some people who are fully vaccinated can test positive uh, for COVID-19, they have no symptoms, they're not getting sick. Uh, and if there's any chance you could spread uh, that virus to somebody else, you'd wanna avoid that, particularly to somebody who's not vaccinated so, and can still so get very sick. That's why you're gonna wear your mask. So when do you think we will know for certain and do you think we will at least have that answer one way or another by June 15th, when everything is supposed to reopen, do you think we're still gonna need the mask mandate then? You know, it's, it's such an interesting question. So I, I'd separate two things. I think we'll know a lot more by June 15th about uh, sort of the power of these vaccines and how much virus potentially is shed by people who are fully protected with the vaccine. Will we still need to wear masks? Uh, I think there'll be some situations where we will still have uh, some people that will need to wear masks. So if we look at schools, camps, places where our children are, uh, the vast majority of our children, particularly our younger children, are not going to be vaccinated mm -hmm. by June 15th. And, you know, again, I want to note, you know, children all along have been capable of becoming infected, spreading the infection and getting sick. So we're going to need to continue to protect our children. So, yes, masks will be around and I think uh, it'll depend on the situation. And what about the idea of L.A. County considering the uh, vaccine passport as a requirement? Yeah, you know, um, we're not uh, requiring uh, that that people get vaccinated in order to do an activity uh, or as an entry to uh, something uh, that that the government is requiring. And, and the good reason for that is this is still a vaccine that is under emergency use authorization. Uh, the FDA is continuing to amass uh, information about vaccine safety and efficacy. And they will eventually, uh, and sometime soon, uh, be able to fully authorize this vaccine through through their um, you know rigorous process uh, for giving their final stamp of approval. And uh, I don't know uh, in, in in anything I recall uh, that we've actually ever required a vaccine for people to have to use as a point of entry to an activity. What about uh, schools? From the governor's perspective. Uh, when it's not already been, a, a, well, I mean, I mean a vaccine under emergency use authorization. Right, right, right. Mm. Okay. I think we wait until we've got all the approvals from the FDA. And then you're absolutely right. There may be places where this does become like, like measles and, and mumps and, and rubella 
uh, and other vaccines that we require, particularly in school settings and particularly in settings like healthcare settings where uh, people can be very vulnerable and our workers uh, do need to be fully vaccinated if they're gonna be in those settings. You know, always there are medical exemptions that, right. that are appropriate. Uh, but, but I think what we're waiting for right now is that full approval uh, by the FDA for this vaccine. And in the meantime, you know, our job is obviously, as you know well, uh, to give people really good information about the safety and efficacy so when it is their turn to get vaccinated, they feel like they've got what they need to make that really good decision.